Welcome to MMA Play 365. I'm Newsom and I'm here to give you a Bayes AI recap from our UFC prediction software from last weekend's event at UFC 283, which was an absolutely phenomenal event and Bayes AI hit 80% on the straight pick prediction accuracy. Now that's not just 80% on the usual 11 or 12 fights on the card. There was 15 fights on the fight card. It got 12 correct out of 15, only three incorrect. And like I say, for me, I'm super impressed with that. We also ran some updates on the algorithms as well during last week. And one major update that we pushed through was to make Bayes AI more intuitive. So not only is it analyzing data, a variety of data and multiple data sets, but we've now also added some intuitive information into the algorithms to, again, just help produce stronger results on the win-loss, on the methods of victory, and also the methods of victory plus rounds as well. So really excited about that update and then when it comes out with 80 percent we've got a couple of gems in this recap as well a lot of real good predictions so really happy and we're going to jump straight into the predictions now and the first fight of value was actually the main event i went head to head with the ai which more often than not only ends up one way jamal hill versus glover Teixeira. so basically i had jamal hill to win at 59 percent. odds implied at 59 percent is minus 144 you could have got between minus 110 and minus 140 on jamal hill depending on when you bet him throughout fight week but again there was value across all those lines you know it closed at around minus 140 Bayes AI said it should have been minus 144 so the longer the fight week went on the less value you would have got but if you bet it early using Bayes AI's information then again you'd have got plenty of value on that and actually watching the fight it would have been an easy cash as well so definitely good work from Bayes AI with that prediction again I, I thought Glover Teixeira might have been favoured from Bayes AI but Bayes AI was on the ball. Now we're moving on to the next fight. We've got a gem here. We've got Bruno Fajeda versus Gregory Rodriguez. Now, Gregory Rodriguez was a very big favourite in this fight. Bruno Fajeda coming in on short notice, making his UFC debut. He was undersized as well by the looks of the two men. Gregory Rodriguez was definitely the bigger man. So I was quite surprised when Bayes AI favoured Bruno Fajeda to win. Bayes AI favoured Bruno Fajeda to win at 55%, so it was basically saying that Fajeda should have been a minus 122 favourite. You could have got Bruno Fajeda anywhere between plus 250 and plus 300. He was a big underdog that Bayes AI was saying that should have been favoured in the fight. So like I say, when I first saw this, I was relatively surprised, but man... Bruno Fajeda did a real good job inside the cage and Bayes AI did a real good job of predicting it because we can go even further. Fajeda to win inside the distance, so that's adding Bayes AI's knockout and submission percentages together. You get 54%, which is only 1% less than Fajeda to win outright. So if you wanted any more value, if you wanted to be greedy and wanted Bayes AI's favourite, at more than plus 250, plus 300, then you could have gone inside the distance at 54%. Odds implied on that is minus 117. So we're still in the minus numbers. And this is for Fajeda to finish the fight as a big underdog. You could have got inside the distance at plus 325 to plus 350. So I gain a ton of value there. If you wanted to go one step further and just wanted Fajeda to win by KO, TKO, because he is a knockout artist with power, that was 40% from Bayes AI. 40% odds implied is plus 150. We are now into the plus money figures, but this is for the exact method of victory. So you could have got the KO TKO for Bruno Fajeda at plus 450 when Bayes AI saying it should have been plus 150. A ton of value there. And we go one step further because this is one of the gems. Bruno Fajeda to win via KO TKO in round one specifically. It's only 1% less than the KO overall. 39%, odds implied on 39% is plus 156. Guess what? You could have got a plus 600 to a plus 850 betting ticket on Bruno Fajeda to win by KO TKO in round one when Bayes AI was saying it should have only been plus 156. A gem there across the board. The win loss, the inside the distance, the KO TKO, the KO TKO in the specific round one as well. A ton of value everywhere. You wouldn't have lost money using Bayes AI's predictions on Bruno Fajeda versus Gregory Rodriguez. So the next fight to talk about, one half of the Bonfim brothers, Gabriel Bonfim versus Munir Lazaz. 
So Bonfim to win Bay's AI had at 59%. 59% odds implied on that is minus 144. You would have got minus 155 to minus 190 on the betting line at the bookies, depending on where you bet it throughout fight week. So there wasn't a lot of value on the money line with this solid winner. However, you can get value once you start to really dig into Bayes AI's predictions and start looking elsewhere at where you can find that value. So Gabriel Bond theme to win inside the distance. Again, you had the knockout, you had the submission percentages together. You get 58%, which is only 1% less than Bond theme to win outright. So at 58%, you're looking at minus 138 odds implied. And at the book is to get Bond theme to win inside the distance, you'd have got anywhere between plus 100 and plus 120. So now we're starting to find the value. So the value wasn't with Bayes AI wasn't necessarily in the money line. It was now starting to look at the finishers. Now, if you go for bomb theme to win via submission, that was 46% predicted by Bayes AI, which odds implied is plus 117. And again, at the bookies, you'd have got anywhere from plus 175 to plus 230. So again, you're starting to increase your value now. And the bomb theme submission was by far the highest prediction of method of victory for Gabriel Bonfim in this fight as well and you go one step further Bonfim to win via submission in round one you're looking at 23% odds implied on that is plus 335 and at the book is you'd have got a plus 500 betting ticket on that method of victory plus the specific round as well so like I say this is a really good example of a fight that doesn't have too much value from the money line perspective the overall win loss but then you really start to dig into the prediction percentages and compare it to the bookies odds and now you're starting to find value inside the distance when you're looking at now methods of victory plus methods of victory plus rounds as well and that's where you're getting your value so again another good job from Bayes AI in that fight in my opinion and now the second half of the Bonfim brothers Ismail Bonfim versus Terence McKinney Ismail Bonfim to win was 64% predicted by Bayes AI now 64% Odds implied, that's minus 178. You could have got anywhere from a pick'em at minus 110 to plus money at plus 110 with Ismail Bonfim, who should have been, according to Bayes AI, a minus 178 favourite. So that is a ton of value there on Ismail Bonfim. And now we're going one step further. So Ismail Bonfim to win inside the distance. Again, you add the knockout and submission percentages together. You get 41%. Now, odds implied on 41% is plus 144. And you'd have got a plus 150 betting ticket at the bookies. So not a great amount of value, but some value nonetheless. And you go one step further, Ismail Bonfim to win via KOTKO, which was the highest method of victory at 27%. Odds implied at 27% is plus 270. And again, at the book is, you're getting plus 275. So a little bit of value, but not a great deal. So again, opposite to Ismail Bonfim's brother, Gabriel Bonfim, this is an example of where the money line does provide the best amount of value and actually the finishes, the method of victory, the method of victory plus rounds aren't as good as just betting the money line straight. So real good examples from both Bonfim brothers, just the opposite way around on where to find value using Bayes AI. Moving on to the next solid winner, we've got Nicholas Dolby versus Wally Alves. Dolby to win. 54% predicted by Bayes AI at 54%. The odds implied on that is minus 117. You could have got Dalby eventually at plus 110 to plus 120. Dalby did open up as a favourite, but the odds flipped with all the money coming in on Wally Alves. And then that then provided value on Dalby from Bayes AI's side who was saying that he should have been a slight favourite, but you would have got plus money on it. If you wanted to look even further at Dalby, Dalby to win via decision was actually at 26%. Odds implied at 26% is plus 285, and you would have got a plus 325 betting ticket at the bookies on Dalby to win via decision. So again, value on both, slightly more value on the Dalby money line, but again, you would have got value on the Dalby decision, which was again predicted by Bayes AI to for Nicholas Dalby to win a decision opposed to finishing Wally Alves, you'd have got value on the decision prop or you'd have got value on the money line as well. So again, another solid prediction from Bayes. And we're going to finish off with the Bayes AI Dog of the Week. So the Dog of the Week package at MMA Play 365 is just $1.99. You get the Bayes AI's highest predicted underdog and you also get the handicapper underdog 
of the week from myself as well. So you get 200 dogs for $1.99. If they both lose, we give you your money back. It's that simple. So the base AI dog of the week was the, again, the underdog with the highest percentage straight pick prediction, which was Daniel Marcos versus Simon Oliveira. So Daniel Marcos to win base AI had 69%. And it's 69% Bayes AI is saying that Daniel Marcos should have been a minus 223 favorite, but instead he was a plus 150 to plus 170 underdog throughout fight week. It did close the longer the fight week went on. And I think in some places it did close at plus 100 as well. So a lot of money did come in on Daniel Marcos throughout fight week. But like I say, Bayes AI predicting at 69% minus 223. Bayes was saying Daniel Marcos should have been and you could have got him at plus 150 plus 170. That is an insane amount of value on Daniel Marcos's money line. But the value doesn't stop on the money line. You look at Daniel Marcos to win inside the distance. Again, that's knockout and submission percentages added together. You get 38.05%. And there's a reason why I've got into the 05s. Normally, I just round the numbers up or down depending on where they're at. But at 38.05%, the odds implied there is plus 163. If you'd have bet on Daniel Marcos to win inside the distance, you would have got a plus 250 ticket at the bookies value there but we move on Marcos to win by KOTKO 37.80 so you can see that there's not a lot between the inside the distance and the KOTKO and that's because Marcos is more likely to look for a knockout than a submission especially against Simon Oliveira who has a lot of submissions to his name so it makes sense now Marcos to win by a KOTKO at 37.80% odds implied is plus 165 but you're actually getting a plus 350 betting ticket at the bookies. So the value there for me, the great value on the money line, the great value if you want to skip past the money line would be on the KOTKO opposed to the inside the distance due to the line differences that you're getting at the bookies. And there's only a tiny, tiny percentage difference, difference between the inside the distance and the KO, but you're getting a much better betting line at the bookies. So a real good week overall from Bayes AI at UFC 283. We come into a one-week break, but next week we're looking at UFC Vegas 68, which I don't mean to put a dampener on it, but in my opinion, it looks possibly like the worst UFC event in UFC history. But I'm sure Bayes AI will be able to pick out some gems, pick out some good predictions. So until then, until the next recap, thank you for listening. I'm Newsom, and we'll see you again next time.